Greetings again today in that name that's far above every name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good to see you today here in the Northside Baptist Church. We welcome every one of you. May the Lord bless you. And to you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium here in the Northside Baptist Church in Athens, Georgia. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. And if you can call someone and have them to tune in and get this hour coming up, we'll try to be a blessing to them. We appreciate it very much. Now, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. In the original Schofield Reference Bible, you'll find it on page 422. 422 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. Now, the singing and the message today will both be on cassette tape. We send this tape out for a gift of three dollars for each tape. The gift is used to help defray the radio expense. I have a number of tape listed. I have a list here of about a hundred and and fifty-eight here in my hand. Now you can write in and get these tape by request for title and number. We'll send them out to you. Appreciation for your support. Your gift of three dollars for each tape. And my mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603, is the zip code number. We covet your prayers. We want you to write to us, and we appreciate it so very much. Now, 2 Kings chapter 422, or chapter 2, rather, on page 422. I'll get it right in a moment. Now, when I give the page number, remember... I'm always giving the page number from the original Schofield Reference Bible, the King James Version. That's the kind of Bible I've been using since I've been in the ministry. It's one of the greatest. You can't improve on the King James Version. You've got a lot of modern translations today, but nothing any better than the King James Version and never will be. And then the Schofield Reference, you find them to be of much help in your Bible study. 2 Kings chapter 2. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry he, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tear, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and ripped them in two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. 
That's reading from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. I'm going to speak to you today on this subject, similarity of Elijah's departure to heaven and that of Jesus. I want you to see the comparison. I want you to see the similarity between the two, how that, what happened to one and then what happened to the other. Elijah is mentioned 100 times in the Bible. He was a great prophet of God. Elijah the Tishbite appeared on the scene all of a sudden with the power of God upon him. God greatly used this man Elijah in his day. Now we find that four important names in my text. I've given you four important names I want to point out because they have great significance in their meaning. Name number one is Gilgal. That means to roll away. The name Gilgal means to roll away. That's why Joshua brought the people of Israel after the death of Moses and circumcised those who had not been circumcised in the wilderness and, of course, rolled away their responsibility and the thoughts of Egypt from their minds. Now, that's typical of Calvary where Jesus died on the cross and our sins are rolled upon him and he paid that sin debt. The next name is the name Bethel. Now the name Bethel means the house of God. After you have been to Calvary by faith and you're saved, your next concern need to be the house of God. God planted his church and it's important. God loved the church, gave himself for it. And you need to be deeply concerned about the house of God, the place of worship. God never took it lightly. Jesus always found himself in the synagogue on the Sabbath. So did Paul. And then when they established the New Testament churches, they made it their business to be found in the house of God. When you're saved, then Bethel comes next. Number three is Jericho. It means, it means the spirit-filled life or the victorious life. Every Christian should live a victorious life and can, if they so desire, willing to pay the price. And after that, of course, heaven. Jordan in the Bible, to many, is a type of heaven. And so you need to keep that in mind. We find also, by the way of introduction, that we have four people translated in the Bible. Four people, four different groups translated in the Bible. Number one was Enoch. The Bible says Enoch walked with God. It was not because God took him. He went to heaven without dying. Secondly, you find Elijah. Elijah went to heaven in a chariot of fire and horses of fire. Went to heaven without dying. And then the third one you find is the Lord Jesus Christ. After his death, he ascended up into heaven in Acts chapter 1. And they saw him as he went up. Then, of course, group number four will be the true born-again believers that will be alive when Jesus comes. That's called the rapture. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18 tells you there, He shall descend from heaven with a great sh uh, shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so the raptured saints will go out without dying. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52, Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling eye at the last trump. That is the rapture. Now I want to mention today seven things about the similarity of Elijah and Christ's departure from the earth. Notice these things are very similar. Number one, we find there came the tearing. We find in the Bible that three times Elijah told Elisha to tarry and wait for him at a certain place. Now Elisha was the one to succeed Elijah. Elijah was to be taken away. Elisha was to take over while he left off. And then we find Elijah said to Elisha, he said now before they reached Bethel, he said, now I want you to tarry. You find that in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 2. Elisha said, I'm not going to tarry. I'm going on with you wherever you go. He said, tarry here. He said, no, I'm not going to tarry. That was before he reached Bethel. Then we find secondly, just before they reached Jericho in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 4, Elijah said to Elisha, I want you to tarry. He said, I'm not going to tarry here. I'm not staying here. I'm going on with you where you go. So they went on. And just before they reached Jordan in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 6, 
Elijah said to Elisha, I want you to tarry. I want you to wait here. I'm going across Jordan. He said, no, sir. I'm not going to tarry behind. Sir, I'm going with you. And he did. And they crossed over Jordan. Now the Lord Jesus Christ, after he was buried and rose again, crucified, buried and risen again, and before he went back to heaven, he said to his apostles, I want you to tarry. I want you to wait, he said. Amen. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 49, he said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, and you be endured with power from on high. So Jesus said to the apostles and the disciples, I want you to tarry. You find in Acts chapter 1 and verse 4, And being assembled together with them, commanded them, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says he, Ye have heard of me. Now this speaks of the great promise of God Almighty. Tarry, tarry. When you come to the Bible, and you begin to read the great promises of God, and you say, These I can claim. God promised thus and so in the Bible. Then you get out on your knees, you talk to God about it, and you tarry until you get the answer. That is, wait till God gives the answer. Don't give up. Tarry, said he, tarry in Jerusalem until you receive the power from on high. Jesus went back to heaven, and they went to Jerusalem like he commanded. They waited in the temple. They tarried there until that power came like God said it would. And then we come to the second one, and that's the heavenly witnesses. Now when Elijah went to heaven, there were some heavenly witnesses. When Jesus went back to heaven, there were some heavenly witnesses. There was a chariot of fire and the horses of fire in the day of Elijah. In 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 11, And it came to pass as they still went on and talked, that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So you see here that you have the chariot of fire and the horses of fire. They're the witnesses as Elijah went up into heaven as the Bible tells us. Now in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 10, you have here the Bible said, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as they went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Now these witnesses I'm, I'm referring to here has to do with heavenly witnesses. The chariot of fire and horses of fire. Here we find when Jesus got ready to send back to heaven, you have two heavenly witnesses appearing on the scene. Two men in white apparel came down and joined him there on the Mount of Olives just before he ascended back to heaven. I don't know who they were. The Bible doesn't say they were heavenly witnesses. And they witnessed the Lord Jesus Christ ascending back to heaven. They were standing there with the group. So you have the heavenly witnesses here, both with Elijah and also with the Lord Jesus Christ. Then that moves us to number three, and that is three days of suspicion at Elijah's home going, and the same whenever they crucified the Son of God. In 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 17, whenever Elijah went back to heaven, or went to heaven, in a chariot of fire and horses of fire, the Bible said they sent 50 men, and they saw three days, but found him not. After he went back, after he disappeared, after his first trip to heaven there, then they started looking for him. For three long days, they looked for the Lord, for Elijah, and they could not find him. Fifty men. They combed the valleys. They went over the hills. They looked under the trees. They looked in the gullies. There they combed out the, the waters, the pools, and whatnot. They couldn't find the man Elijah. They were very suspicious. They thought, well, he's over here on the mountain hid someplace. He's down in the valley hid somewhere. He's in a cave around here. Oh, he's drowned here in the river Jordan. And they started looking for him, but they couldn't find him. Now, Dr. Roloff, who's now in heaven, used to say, well, when they start looking for Elijah, they better get something more than a horse or, or a buggy or a cart or carriage. If they're going to find Elijah, they better get on an airplane and take off in that direction because that's the way he went. He went up into heaven. And there the Bible said he went out without dying. But for three days, 50 men searched for his body, but they could not find him. They thought he might be hid around there. either dropped dead and they couldn't find him. Now in Matthew chapter 27, verses 63 through 64, the Bible says, Sir, we remember that deceiver said while he was yet alive, 
After three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure. On the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away. Now when they crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. They said he said after three days he's coming out of the grave. And they were very suspicious. Those say, they said alright just seal up the grave. And they sealed the grave up. And then they said that's not enough. We want to put some soldiers on guard here at the mouth of the grave. We want to be sure that he doesn't come out of there. Because that deceiver said after three days he had come out of that grave. And we want to be sure that he doesn't come out. They were very suspicious. And for three days and three nights they watched that grave. There was a huge stone over the mouth of that grave. And it was sealed by the king's signet. Therefore no man could break that seal. If any man broke that seal and opened that grave, that meant sure death. In addition to that, those soldiers stood there wide awake on the alert. They want to be sure that the body of Jesus Christ did not come out after three days and three nights. But it did. It came out after three days and three nights. They were suspicious three days and three nights. Just like the 50 men suspicious of Elijah when he disappeared. I remind the old farmer that lived out in the country. He lived many miles out in the country. They came out to see him one day from the phone company. They said, Mr. We can run a wire out here into your house that we can talk to you from town. Or you can talk to anyone in town that has the wire in their home and the phone. The old farmer said, I, I, I don't believe a word of that. I just don't believe that can be done. Uh, they said, sir, it can be done, but you'll have to pay your part if we run the wire out to your house. He said, well... I, I, don't, I don't believe it can be done. I'm suspicious of that. I don't, I don't think you can talk through a wire. But I'll tell you, uh, I'll go ahead and see what happens. And you go ahead and run the wire in here. And if it happens that we can talk through that wire, I'll gladly pay my part. So the phone company got real busy. And they ran the wire from the little town out to the, the old man's home way out in the country. And it so happened that day after they'd completed wiring it, they got on the phone and called his wife Mary. And they said to the farmer, said, now we are connected up. You can talk to your wife, Mary, and we're going to prove that you can talk through this wire. The old farmer, he still doubted it, but he reached and got the phone. And there's a terrible cloud coming up about that time, a lot of lightning and a lot of thundering. And he picked that phone up and stuck it up to his ear. About time his wife said, John, is that you? Lightning hit that wire and knocked the man flat of his back. He said, that's Mary, all right. <laughs> I'll be glad to do my part. So he got up and paid his part. But he was made a believer. He was convinced that he could talk through that why. Now these people made believers after a certain period of time. And then we come to thought number four. That is both departed in the presence of believers only. You know the last time that an unsaved person of this world ever saw Jesus Christ was on the cross. No sinners ever saw him again after he came down off the cross, was buried and risen again. Only believers. When Jesus Christ came out of that grave and came back and appeared to people, he appeared to believers only. You must remember that no sinner, nobody of the world ever saw him again after that crucifixion. The last time they saw him, he was bleeding and dying on a cruel Roman cross. So Jesus appeared unto many, 500 brethren at one time. He appeared unto the disciples. He appeared unto Mary Magdalene. He appeared to Simon Peter. But only saved people did he appear to. Did you know when Elijah went up into heaven, no unsaved people saw him? None. Only one believer. That was Elisha. Elisha saw him as he went up. Elisha saw him leave the ground and get in that fiery chariot and those horses of fire and chariot of fire. And Elijah went to glory in a chariot of fine horses of fire. Elisha saw that with his own eyes. Now there were some of the old prophets behind the hill over there, but they couldn't see that far. They didn't see what was going on. They heard something unusual was going to happen, but they did not see Elijah when he went up. And so therefore he went up in the sight of a believer and went on to be with the Lord. So always remember this. The last time that the sinners saw the Son of God was when he was hanging on the cross, bleeding and dying for them. The next time sinners that die without God will see the Son of God 
will be at the great white throne judgment when he sits by that throne and judges that sinner and sends them to the lake of fire. We come to thought number five, and that is there was imparted power at the ascension of both Jesus and Elijah. Unusual power came back after their ascension. We find in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 14, And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had smitten the waters, they parted thither and th hither and thither, and Elisha went over. There you saw unusual power in the hands of Elisha. Elijah said to Elisha, If you see me when I go, I'll grant your request. Now Elisha requested a double portion of the Spirit of God. Now Elijah performed seven miracles. Elisha received a double portion and performed 14 miracles in his lifetime. And so Elisha saw Elijah going up and down came that mantle. That mantle fell upon Elisha. When he picked that mantle up, he received a double portion of the Spirit of God. Now you as a believer today can receive a double portion of God's Spirit. When you're saved, you can have the Spirit of God coming in you. But when you're filled, that's something different. You then have a double portion of the Spirit of God. So Elisha had that double portion. In 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 14, Elisha had it. Not Elijah, Elisha. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had smitten the waters, they parted thither and hither, and Elisha went over. See, Elijah had done that in crossing before his ascension. Now when Elijah came, Elisha came back to Jordan, he said, How will I get across this water? Elijah, my predecessor, went on and he crossed the water. How can I get across this water? And then he used that power. God gave him unusual power. And the Bible tells you he smote the waters with that mantle. And those waters began to divide. And he went across on dry ground. He had power from God. Well, when it comes to the ascension of Jesus after his ascension, we find great power came upon the apostles and disciples waiting there on the day of Pentecost. And Jesus said, greater things shall you do than these when you get that power. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Samaria and in the uttermost part of Judea and all the uttermost parts of the earth, he tells it here. And they tarried, they waited, and they received the power of the Holy Spirit that came on the day of Pentecost. And they went out witnessing for the Lord. So the power came after the ascension of the Son of God. He went up, the Holy Ghost came down. Number six, there were two symbolic elements seen in connection with their departure. In connection with Elijah's departure, you see the whirlwind and chariots and horses of fire. Second Kings chapter 2 and verse 11. There appeared a chariot of fire, horses of fire, and pardon them asunder. Elijah went up by a whirlwind. Now this is symbolic of the power of God's spirit and God's word, no doubt about it. Now when Jesus went up into heaven, they saw a great cloud that caught him out of sight. And then in Acts chapter 2, there came cloven tongues of fire upon the heads of the believers. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 9, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 3, there appeared on him cloven tongues like as a fire and set upon each of them. So here you have the two symbolic elements seen in connection with the departure of Elijah and also the departure of of Jesus after he went back to heaven. Then we come to thought number seven, and that is both appeared after their disappearance. After Elijah went to heaven, he appeared back on the earth. Did you know that? He most certainly did. About a thousand years later, Elijah came back down to this earth after he caught that chariot and went to heaven. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 17 and verse three, when Jesus, James, and John went up on top of this mountain, the Bible said, Behold, the glory of God appeared on the scene, and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with them. So Moses and Elijah came back on the mountain of transfiguration. I've been on that mountain. It's a real high mountain. And they came back and they talked with Jesus. Now the Bible tells us exactly what they talked about. You know what they talked about? The Bible said they talked about his decease in Jerusalem. They talked about the time when he'd be crucified in Jerusalem. 
Would you like to have had that conversation on tape and been able to listen to it? Now Moses and Elijah talked about Jesus going to the cross. No doubt they encouraged him. Elijah represented the prophets. Moses represented the law. And you have the law and the prophets there talking to the Savior, which is the grace of God. And there you have the law, the prophets, and the grace of God there as they talk together about his decease in Jerusalem. And so he, they appeared, Elijah appeared on that mountain after he went to heaven. Now after Jesus rose from the dead, they sealed that tomb. And of course they said he can't come out, but he did. He came out of that grave. And then the first person to see him after his resurrection was Mary Magdalene, out of whom he'd cast seven demons. Mary Magdalene, the woman that saved up the anointment and bowed down and washed his feet with tears and dried, it with her hair, dried his feet with her hair and anointed him. Mary Magdalene, a woman that had seven demons in her that loved Jesus with all of her heart. Jesus said to Simon, this woman that is forgiven most, she loves most. And there she loved him dearly. And she was there weeping because his body was missing from the tomb. And while she was in the garden there weeping, maybe all alone, saying, I wonder where they have laid my Lord. They have taken my Lord away. And I don't know what they have done with him. And about that time, somebody said, Mary. Yeah. And she recognized that voice. She said, a bony eye, Master. And Jesus said, I'm here. I'm alive. And he appeared unto Mary Magdalene. She was the first one to see him in his glorified body after his resurrection. The last person to ever see Jesus Christ after his resurrection was John. On the Isle of Patmos, over there on a lonely island. A little rock out in the Aegean Sea. There on the Isle of Patmos, John was banished out there that he might, be, might starve to death. And while on that island, Jesus appeared to him and revealed unto him the book of the Revelation. And there John fell down at his feet like a dead man. God gives you a description in, that, in Revelation chapter 1 of John falling down in the presence of Jesus. John was the last one to ever see the Lord Jesus Christ after his resurrection. Paul saw him, but that was before John saw him. John was the last one to ever see him. And nobody since that time has ever seen the Lord Jesus Christ and will not until you die or until the rapture. You may say, now wait a minute, preach Evans. Didn't one of these nice and old uh, healing racketeers say some time ago that Jesus came to his room there in his hospital and spent 20 minutes there with him and then the angels um, came and then before that he saw Jesus uh, 700 feet high? Yes, that racketeer said that, but he's a bald-faced liar. He told that liar to get money out of poor gullible people that don't have any more sense than to support his racketeer ministry. He's building, he's built a hospital and has a, a great university, but he's a bald-faced liar. The Son of God did not appear to him. He's a crook and a racketeer, and I have no apology to make. Any man that'll tell a lie like that will do anything. When he claimed that Jesus came all the way from heaven, to put his approval up on his false teaching and what he's doing. And the angels came down and joined him there. They talked together for 20 minutes. A man will tell that to the American public and to the world. And tell a lie like that or do anything. He's a crook and a racketeer. I have no confidence in him. Never heard him preach any gospel. Heard him a few times but never has he ever preached any gospel. He said himself he's never healed anybody that's been born blind. In fact, means he's never healed anybody. He's been a crook from the beginning. He's a crook now. And he'll be a crook when he dies. He lied, beloved, like his father the devil. Now you listen to me. The only person, the last person to ever see the Lord Jesus Christ was John. Nobody will ever see Jesus Christ again till you die of the rapture. The saints of God will see him then. Or the sinners will see him at the judgment bar of God at the great white throne judgment. But nobody's ever seen Jesus since that time. Nobody's ever seen the Virgin Mary since she died, was buried, and her ashes, her dust is still over yonder where they buried her. And nobody's ever seen her. Nobody's ever seen Jesus. Nobody's ever seen the prophets since we got the Bible. God gave us complete word of God, and God gave us this word to go by, and nobody will ever see Jesus till you die of the rapture or at the great white throne judgment. And you better believe that that's the Bible I'm telling you about. Some time ago, after World War II, a man was riding down 
the highway between Knoxville and Memphis, Tennessee, picked up a hitchhiker, began to witness this hitchhiker, tell him about Jesus. And the hitchhiker is in it. He said, I care nothing about that. All thing I want is a good can of cold champagne velvet beer. He said, that's all I want. I care nothing about what you got to say about God of the Bible or the Spirit of God. I want a good cold can of champagne velvet beer. The rider said, all right. Uh, uh, the man said, I let me out here. Here's a place where I can get one. And he stopped and let the man out. The man went into the beer dive. The next day, this man that had picked up the hitchhiker, picked up his newspaper, and lo and behold, he saw where a man had walked out of this beer joint, crossed the road, started down the highway, and there came a beer truck, champagne velvet beer truck. Thing ran into him, wreck turned over, they found the man's body, and a portion that had the name of the beer on a portion of the metal off of that truck had penetrated that man's body. The poor man died and went to hell. All he wanted was a can of champagne, beer, and died and went to hell. That's pathetic. Let's stand to our feet. Father, I pray today that you take the message and use it. May thy name be honored. May Jesus be glorified and all we say or do. We thank you for the privilege of having the gospel, being able to preach the gospel. And I pray to your Lord in Jesus' name that you'll use it today to help many people and speak to our hearts in Christ's name I ask it. Amen. Debbie's going to play for us. For us, and as she plays, if there's anybody in the building here that's unsaved, are you backslidden on God? Are you want to join the church? Are you want to come forward for any reason the Spirit of God prompts you to move forward on? I want you to do it as she plays for us at this time. Would you come? If you're not saved, you need to get right with God. If you're a backslider, you need to come back to God. If you don't have a good Bible-believing fundamental church home, you need one. Don't take your church membership lightly. It's very important in the sight of God. God established the church. God loves the church. God put it here for a purpose. God moves on you to join Northside. You may come forward by letter, by statement, as a candidate for baptism. If you need to get saved, you may come. If any other reason you feel like coming on, come right ahead as we wait. Give me ample time to respond. How about it? God is speaking, just come on, let us help you.